what I started to say before I was cut off by running out of time with the last video is that there are a lot of other biochemical pathways that occur in the body and um, I think a lot of times it's very hard for students to understand the biochemistry of photosynthesis and respiration and that's because it occurs in stages and we tend to take these subjects and uh, uh, teach them one right after another without explaining very well how they interact and what the differences are. For example, uh, light reactions in photosynthesis make NADP plus H, NADPH, and ATP. Um, there's only one type of light reaction. That's what they do. And uh, they use oxygen. Um, I mean, they use carbon dioxide and, and give off oxygen. But the dark reactions, after this is made, take the carbon atoms and put them in chains to make the actual sugars. This is called the Calvin cycle. So it's a second step. It does not require the photons from the sun to do it. And then what if we get real hot out? Well, some plants are adapted to deserts and very hot climates, and they have the ability to use oxygen instead of CO2 to build sugars. And um, they can do this when the oxygen builds up real high because the stoma closed to conserve water. And so they tend to be desert type plants. Uh, so that's a separate thing. But that's not respiration. That's photorespiration. Oxygen is used. That's why it's called photorespiration instead of CO2. And there's other variations, but not for the light reactions. Other plants have variations on these things, and uh, your book talks about a couple of them that we know about. There's probably more that we don't know about. I wouldn't doubt it at all. And then we have respiration. Let's talk about that. Respiration occurs in steps two. Uh, respiration is where we are burning oxygen and we are burning the food basically the sugar or the glucose uh, in our bodies and we start by breaking glucose down and that's called glycolysis and we get two pyruvate molecules this is anaerobic this doesn't require oxygen it produces NADH and ATP but it is these pyruvate molecules then that feed into the Krebs cycle they use the pyruvate to make NADPH and FADH2 and this is aerobic and this occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria then the NADPH and FADH2 are moved or move to the they're right there next to it they move by diffusion to the Christi of the mitochondria and they make ATP there Okay, so the Krebs cycle is the aerobic part to feed these molecules with the extra hydrogens on them, protons, into the mitochondria on the Christi to the electron transport chain. But there are variations. If there's no oxygen available, then in our bodies we produce lactic acid, and for a short amount of time we can produce energy without oxygen but the lactic acid that's produced as a byproduct will damage us uh, our muscles if it stays with us too long uh, we use fermentation and yeast to produce wine and beer uh, to produce the alcohol in uh, fermentation so it, we use it commercially as well um, as that it can be used in our body and then on page 124 in your text um, and I have a PowerPoint slide to match it. Glucose is not the only source of energy from food. Now this isn't really a part of this class uh, to get into it intensively, so we won't. But I wanted to mention it because I 
I want everybody to understand that there's all these other tissues in your body and you know part of the confusion here is you know that you eat meat proteins fats and all these other things and we keep talking about sugars or glucose being used in this Krebs cycle and so forth to make the energy the ATP and, and, and go through electron transport chain well fats can be broken down into acetyl-CoA CoA, coenzyme A that, f that fits into the program um, amino acids from proteins can be broken out down into pyruvate molecules nucleotides can be broken down into amino acids even though you know they can be converted and they can fit into uh, sometimes the waste product is ammonia in addition to CO2 and how do you know that? Wait a minute, where does this come from? Ammonia? Where do you see ammonia? In the urine, in the urine. I used to use it to fertilize, uh, when I was in college, I made all the guys uh, pee in a bucket and I used it to fertilize the corn in the garden. So, you know, this is the different pathways and I, I thought that was real important to mention this because uh, there's two things here. One is there needs to be an organization in your mind about how these things happen and uh, they don't happen um, they happen very fast but they're not as so simple are they we simplify them and teach one part at a time but they're not so simple a lot of this stuff feeds one into the other and it just it's complicated so we don't think that I don't think at this point that you should memorize the chemistry of all of these things but this is a little, uh, and I, it's in your companion materials. Uh, I've got it at the bottom of that with the links uh, of videos that I'm using and that I recommend to you to use to study this. Uh, so this is what you will see uh, as a way that your book is actually organized one step at a time. But look at this and try to make heads or tails out of it if you can because this one feeds into this one feeds into this one and there's variations glycolysis feeds into the Krebs cycle feeds into the elect electron transport chain and the Krebs cycle here is aerobic there are some anaerobic alternatives that's what fermentation is right and I should just type that in here shouldn't I anaerobic okay and then in your text there's that chart that shows that the breakdown of different kinds of molecules in your food proteins fats and so forth fit into these cycles in different places so they don't all get broken down into pyruvate some do some don't they don't get you know broken down into glucose so um, life is more complicated than that and you'll learn more about that when you take anatomy and physiology and study digestion but I wanted just to make you aware to look at that page in your book page 124 and to see that there are various ways that food fits into the Krebs cycle and there are different waste products that can result from the breakdown of different kinds of food. So proteins and nucleic acids are, one of their characteristics is that they have nitrogen groups. They produce ammonia that goes out in the urine and the rest and proteins and nucleic acids will also produce CO2. So we give off CO2, plants give off oxygen and the two processes are not exactly mirror images of each other but it is the gross reversal of making the food and then using the food making the food and then using the food so if you have problems with this just email me we'll try to uh, get you some better materials to understand it it is probably the most difficult unit in the course in my opinion and I understand your frustration if you're having a problem with it but outline it take it real easy and I think you'll be okay